another case was uh, when we had to deal with uh, mining wastewater. It was a, a big mining company in Peru who needed to treat his uh, tailing water before to discharges, discharge this water into the natural environment. So um, the quality requirements for this outlet water were very strict. There was a very high concentration of suspended solids, heavy metals, a lot of minerals and salts in the, in the inlet water. So we needed to supply a very efficient uh, treatment line. In this case, uh, well, this was one of our, our toughest challenges. Uh, this uh, mining company had uh, this, um, the site was 5,000 meters above the sea level. It was a five year project. So uh, we needed to supply a solution that that after the five years, they would have to take to another place. Once the operation was done at that site, they would take the operati uh, operation to another one and they would use the same water treatment plant. Very tough conditions, uh, temperature during night could drop down to minus 20 degrees Celsius. So we had to include every step of the treatment line inside a container with uh, thermal insulation and heating system in order to maintain a uh, control temperature steady at 18 degrees Celsius with um, enough space inside to perform uh, all the maintenance tasks of the water treatment plant. This project was a uh, zero liquid discharge type. So we needed to supply a water treatment plant that was capable to concentrate over 90,000 milligrams of liter of salts with a minimal reject flow because the reject was going to be crystallized with an evaporator. Uh, the cost of treating one cubic meter at an evaporating system is around $700,000, $800,000. So we needed to be very efficient in order to minimize these uh, reject flow for the evaporator system. The most critical parameters in this case were conductivity, the high suspended solids, and uh, of course, the heavy metals present in these tailing water. So for the outlet water parameters, we needed to comply with uh, local Peruvian regulation, which is very, very strict. So our design, our treatment line was uh, consisted in first, a decanter with uh, oxidation in order to precipitate all the metals present in the water. Then uh, self-cleaning this filter at 100 micron, also with our air-assisted backwash because uh, the TSS levels were very high and variable. So the air-assisted system was the perfect solution to deal with the suspended solids. And also this uh, technology offers guaranteed protection for the UF membrane. <clears throat> After this, uh, the UF membrane was placed to reduce the SDI at the RO inlet. So we can have a lower CIP cleaning frequency of the reverse osmosis membrane. The, uh, the UF would retain all the colloidal solids that could have caused the soiling of the, of the reverse osmosis membrane. Finally, the RO design was start with a double step of reverse osmosis uh, with an additional independent system that worked as a third step to achieve 91% of recovery. This is, a, this is very, very hard to achieve. 91% recovery with uh, very, very difficult water, uh, industrial mining wastewater. So we had an uh, inlet water flow of 45 cubic meter per hour, and the permeate water flow was 41 cubic meter per hour. These 41 cubic meter per hour was discharged into the river, almost with uh, drinking water quality. And uh, the highly concentrated four cubic meter uh, per hour were taken to the evaporator. Uh, and well, thanks to this containerized solution, and with our engineering expertise, we were able to achieve the uh, required water quality by uh, the local authorities. So it was a very, very successful uh, project.